Good morning. My name is Pamela Nightingale, and I'm doing my oral presentation on the subject Working Without Words. My tutor is Wendy, and my curtain ID number is 16217139. Thank you. The Bentley campus enjoys the privilege of being located in the Wajak Nyanga country on the site where the Swan and Canning rivers meet. The area is one of the most significant places that sustained the life and well-being of the traditional owners that gathered along the banks of their rivers. As a representative of the Curtin University, I am proud to honour the Nyanga people and value this place of shared learning. I recognise the historical impact of the past and as an active participants in reconciliation, I am committed to strengthening an equal partnership that will honour the past, present and future. We go forward with honour and respect by acknowledging the elders of Nyanga Nation and past and present, their descendants and families, sovereign owners of the Wajak country. The reading for week 7 is entitled Working Without Words. While the reading focuses on such things as ethnicity and religion in media, specifically those split-second judgments we make looking at a short video in the news or online, I'm going on a different angle. Without words immediately brought to mind to me such things as logos, heraldic symbols and the language of flowers. What follows is a short study on some of the more common and possibly unrealised symbols from around the world. Butterflies the butterfly symbolises hope to many, shown by the chrysalis, where the butterfly must free itself from bindings and thus from its earthly body. In Japan, the butterfly symbolises womanhood, while two butterflies represent marital happiness, and its wandering ways give the meaning of a visitor coming. In the, some Christian symbolism, the butterfly represents the passing of the earthly flesh into the spiritual, and of rising from the grave such as the tale of Psyche in Greek mythology. Currently, the butterfly is the symbol used by Beyond Blue, a group dedicated to helping those with depression, calling on the metamorphosis facet of this symbol. Caduceus. A staff with two serpents entwined around it in opposite directions, Caduceus is the emblem of Hermes, the messenger god of Greece. It uses the duality symbolism of opposites, left and right, dark and light, thus creating balance. The entwined serpents represent the cosmos, a double spiral, which is also seen in DNA. The ancient Greeks added wings to the serpents, thus adding to the forces of opposites, that of the world below and the heavens above. Caduceus is known as the symbol of Asclepius as well, noted as the first healer in Greek mythos. From this comes the most noted use of the caduceus today, that of the ambulance, though it has fallen out of use in Australia. The Penguin Dictionary of Symbols has this to say on serpents. The serpent is a creature embodying the lower psyche, that which is unusual, incomprehensible, and mysterious. Anatta and Jamonganda both encircle the world, giving life and stability to the world, while being in the form of an Ouroboros, a symbol of life into death and death into life. The serpent is an almost contradictory symbol, where it embodies both sides of the symbol, that of life and death, stability and chaos. In Christian mythology, the snake is thought of as a representation of sin. It's he who incites Eve to eat the apple, causing God to cast Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden. Currently, many would recognise the serpent as a symbol of Slytherin, a house from the J.K. Rowling series Harry Potter. While the snake symbolises rebirth in some cultures, its western interpretation is used here to mean a darker, less moral sort of person. The Sun We are taught as children that the sun is a giant flaming ball of gas millions of miles away. It is the centre of our galaxy, and it is a relatively new sun, unlikely to explode any time soon. Before that, we know that the sun gives us light, and when it goes down, we go to bed. In Egypt, the sun was the person personification of Ra, as he travelled across 
the sky, and that as it set each night, he was eaten by a tongue. Many cultures have such a cyclical vision of the sun, that of life and death, and as the sun draws forth each morning, it becomes a symbol of immortality and resurrection. Currently, people recognise Serenity's logo, the Josh Whedon series, as the sun, the darker colours relating to the dark times of the series, and the sun itself depicting rebirth for several characters. Symbols are a part of our world, a sign that our culture informs us of, and often we don't look beyond. The symbols I've discussed today are ones that have been used for millennia and have been major parts of our media in recent years. Only the producers themselves can answer if they thought of the history of these symbols as they used them, but each symbol requires a close look before use, much like we must look at our own actions and thoughts before forming an opinion, rather than relying solely on the media interpretation.